If I must select one of the best V12 engines ever produced by a manufacturer, it's BMW and for several reasons. This is the story about the best and most unique engine BMW has ever made, which made incredible history for BMW and McLaren cars. Behold, the BMW S70 engine. Since 1933, BMW remained famous for its most traditional straight six engines, and with that began the history of BMW's most legendary car engine, the inline sixes, which is half a V12 engine. But it wasn't until 1987 when BMW combined the duo six cylinder the company's first ever production V12, the M70 S70 engine. After BMW discontinued the production of V12 engines, it's about we focused on the engine that started it all with all of its evolutions. The M70 V12 gasoline engine is heavily based on the M20 inline 6. Thus, BMW combined two M20 2.5 liter engines to double the cylinders and liters, forming a brand new M75 liter V12. Both engines had the same bore and stroke made it at a 60 degree angle. The difference was that the M70 engine block had all aluminum and the M20 had a cast iron block. Besides that, the M70 was more technologically advanced, very complex and complicated. The second generation of the BMW 7 Series, E32, came out in 1987 with the brand's first ever V12 engine, later to be used in the 8 Series. BMW aimed to beat Mercedes-Benz to the punch with its first ever German V12 luxury car, and they achieved this feat four years ahead of their competition. The reason is, the M70 was a smooth, reliable engine like a straight six engine, designed as a low-cost project that relied on high-volume parts, many of which were derived from the M40 engine. These included connecting rods, rocker arms, and valves. Each set of six cylinders had its single camshaft, a group of 12 valves, a throttle body, and a Bosch Motronic ECU. The M70 was anything but a performance engine that produced 286 horsepower in the E32 7 series, not much by today's standards. Still, it was more than competitive back then, given its main rival was the Jaguar XJS V12. Its primary design was comfort, smooth driving, and reliability not speed. With the introduction of the first 8 series, the M70 engine was enhanced to a certain extent. However, it wasn't strong enough to become the ultimate engine in the top line version of the 8 series. So, the BMW engineers began developing the S70 engine, a sportier version of the M70 one year prior before the 8 series was released in 1989, which was thought to power the ultimate version of the 8 series that never was the M8. In 1990, BMW released the M8 prototype, based on the E31 8 series which would have been a supercar killer. Sporty, yet we find Grand Tour dedicated to high performance. The engineers set the engine as far back and low in the chassis as they could for the best weight balance possible. The special version of the S70 engine inside the M8 prototype was unlike any other V12 engine. It has 6 liters with dual overhead camshaft, 4 valves per cylinder, carbon fiber intake manifolds, and variable valve timing. This resulted in a total of 640 horsepower and estimated the M8 to achieve a top speed of roughly 200 miles per hour, way ahead of its time. But sadly, BMW never produced the M8 car because it was deemed too expensive for production. This left the most powerful 8 series to be the BMW 850 CSI released in 1992. Under the hood is the S70 B56 engine, an evolution of the M70. However, it produced half the power of the M8 prototype. Thus, the 5.6 liter V12 produced an impressive 385 horsepower, 0 to 60 mile per hour in 5.9 seconds, and reached speeds up to over 170 miles per hour. Interestingly, the S70 B56 was the first ever production V12 engine worldwide to come with the 6 speed manual gearbox and the 850 CSI. And the 850 CSI holds the title for the lowest production numbers of any BMW. Only 1510 models were made in its 5 year life cycle.
The M8 prototype's engine never reached its full potential until it all changed when transformed into a supercar power plant only to be used for the ultimate road car of the 20th century, the McLaren F1 designed by Gordon Murray. In 1990, McLaren was searching for a Formula 1 derived V10 or V12 engine for this project. Initially, Gordon considered asking Honda to build an engine for his car project, but they told him no. That's when Gordon then took the blueprints for the V12 he desired to BMW Motorsports engineering legend, Paul Walsh. He was very intrigued, and after Murray took his offer, Paul worked on building the timeless 6.1 liter V12, called the S70-2. Some of the engine's requirements were to be no more than 60 centimeters long, make more than 550 horsepower, and weigh less than 250 kilograms or 551 pounds. Gordon's aim was low weight and high power. This was achieved through the use of carbon fiber, titanium, Kevlar, magnesium, and gold foil as a heat shield in the engine. The V12 engine included dry slump lubrication, dual overhead camshaft, 12 individual throttle bodies, carbon air intake manifolds, and a 48 valve. Its cylinder heads and double vanos variable valve timing come from the S30 B50 engine and the BMW E36 M3. This made the F1 one of the first naturally aspirated cars to make 100 horsepower per liter. Not only was the S70-2 the most powerful engine, but the most usable and reliable. With the high compression ratio of 11 to 1, it produced a whopping 627 horsepower, 77 more than what Gordon expected while the McLaren F1 only weighs less than 2,500 pounds, similar to a Mazda Miata. The result led the F1 to set world records, with a top speed of 240 miles per hour and 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds. Supposedly, this 30-year-old McLaren is the fastest naturally aspirated car worldwide to this day, and once the fastest car worldwide for almost a decade. Initially, Gordon's creation of the ultimate road car had no intention of going racing. However, due to the high demand by racing teams, he was convinced that the car should be modified into a GT-style endurance race car. And so, the S70-2 engine was slightly modified for motorsport use in the McLaren F1 GTR in 1995. The engine is equipped with an ECU remap and intake air restrictors to reduce the horsepower down to 600 for race use. As far as the engine goes, there were modifications made to it throughout its racing career in the McLaren F1. Less powerful than the road car, yet faster and nimbler due to being super lightweight. Because of this, it dominated the BPR Global GT Series twice and claimed an overall victory at the world's greatest endurance race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1995 with the number 59 Weno Clinic livery. In 1997, BMW Motorsport built in an improved version of the engine, the S70-3. The changes did include the engine liters subducted from 6.1 down to 6.0, while still producing 600 horsepower with the new X-Track sequential transmission. It was used in the McLaren F1 GTR Longtail with stretched rear bodywork. Though it kept the same carbon fiber monocoque as the road car, the car itself was purpose-built with a much longer nose and tail, and a wider back wing to gain as much aerodynamic downforce as possible. Ultimately, BMW ended up with another engine based on the S70-3 known as the P75, where the leather P was specified as a racing engine at BMW Motorsport. This specifically powered the BMW V12 LM prototype and its successor, the V12 LMR, which quickly became a legend that gave BMW its first overall victory at the 1999 24 Hours of Le Mans. To commemorate the victory, BMW decided to do the unusual and unthinkable. When BMW introduced its first ever luxury SUV, the X5 in 1999, the engineers installed that same V12 engine that powered the Le Mans winning V12 LMR into the X5 LM concept for fun. How cool is that? I can answer how cool it gets. 
Though it's a concept car, the racing P75 engine makes 700 horsepower, 531 pound-feet of torque, and can rev up to 8,000 RPM. That's without the engine restrictors making 120 more horsepower than the V12 LMR with just 580 horsepower. The X5 LM was lightning quick in 0 to 60 time in just 4.7 seconds. And on top of that, the SUV showed what it was capable of if it were to go into production. In 2001, Hans Stuck set the record for the quickest SUV around the Nürburgring in the BMW X5 LM at 7 minutes and 49 seconds, an SUV record that was unbeaten for the next 19 years. It rockets like a race car, sounds like a race car, and looks aggressive like a race car. This car is a clear example of how much freedom BMW gives its engineers to research and develop ridiculous things. Nowadays, they don't even do that anymore. Despite that, the S70 engine in its evolution remained BMW M's masterpiece, as well as arguably the greatest engine they developed for one of the most innovative cars, the supercar killer M8 prototype, the ultimate road car McLaren F1, the Le Mans winning V12 LMR, and the unusual X5 LM SUV. Because we are in an era of hybridization and electrification engines, the S70 slash 2 and slash 3 is a clear example of what is part of the past. BMW rarely gets involved in the world of supercars, and this V12 is the only supercar engine its engineers built to supply to another car manufacturer, McLaren. Farewell to the greatest V12 engines of all time, dearly missed and unforgotten. I hope you all BMW and car enthusiasts enjoyed this video. If you did so, you can get more by clicking the like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel for some more upcoming videos like this. Feel free to provide me any suggestions in the comments down below and I'll check them out as soon as possible. Anyways, thanks y'all for watching and have a blessed day. Peace out, stay safe, Chris the Radar, out.